Hey there folks, this is Elias Kineser and the following demonstration is from my Citrix Zen App 6 training course. So what I'm going to do for consistency now is I'm just going to save my running config. I'm going to refresh. And I'm going to minimize the Netscaler and we're going to go ahead and log into the web interface server so that we can make the final tweaks on the web interface server so that it's ready for connectivity. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Let's click on start, run. Let's go into the desktop studio. All right, we're going to expand access. We're going to select Citrix web interface. We're going to expand that Zenapp websites. So if I right click on Zenapp websites right now and drag down to where it says secure access right now, it's not pointing to the gateway. So if the connection from the outside gets to the web interface, the web interface is not configured to communicate with the gateway so the connection is going to fail. So what you have to do here is change this method. So we're going to select it, we're going to click on edit, and we're going to flip it to gateway direct, which means I'm communicating directly with my gateway. We're going to click on next, and we're going to give it the common name of the gateway. So in my case, what I named it was zen.gecko.local, if you guys remember. Now, you can feel free to keep session reliability on. I choose to turn session reliability off and I like my connections to go over 1494. But if you wanted session reliability, this is you where you would keep it on. So I have this configured. We're going to click on next. And here you're going to specify your secure ticket authority. Now because the server that I'm on is also a secure ticket authority, what I'm going to do is HTTP 10.4 and I'm going to also specify scripts forward slash ctx sta dot dll and you can see here that it's basically asking you to do that so we're gonna go ahead and click on OK everything else I wanna keep the same if you had more than one secure ticket authority you can go ahead and add it here you can select this box to load balance among them so that requests are going to one or the other at any given time. We're going to click on finish. Okay, so what did I just do at this point? Anyone? Did anyone see a problem with this? If I leave it at this point, will anything break in my environment? Well, the answer is yes, something will break. Because now what I've done is I've configured this web interface server for external users. So my users that are coming on the LAN, when they hit this web interface, they're going to try to communicate with the access gateway. It's not going to work because they're not coming through the Netscaler. They're hitting it directly. So in this case, now I have a problem. So the only way to get around that problem, or one of the ways to get around that problem, is to create another site for the users. So what you can do in this case is if you create right-click here, create site, You'll notice that it's now forward slash Citrix, forward slash Zenapp with the number one. So you can click on next. We're going to authenticate at web interface. And we don't want to configure it because we've gone through the configuration before. But so what I wanted to tell you guys, and, and you can do this in reverse. So if you wanted to select Zenapp one, for external users, then when we were on the Netscaler and we were specifying the IP address or the fully qualified domain name of our web interface, then what you would have to do is append it with a forward slash Citrix, forward slash Zenapp1. Now, the reason we didn't have to do it the way I configured it is because I asked it to point to just whatever the default of the web server is. And when we were creating this first site, if you guys remember, there was a checkbox that we selected so that this site becomes the default site for this particular server. So when I'm pointing directly to it, it's automatically redirecting to forward slash Citrix, forward slash Zenapp. But there's no reason why you can't flip these around and have the Netscaler point to Zenapp 1 and keep this for internal users if you choose to do so. Now, configuring the second site is just as configuring the first one, it's the same parameters, so on and so forth.
Now, from the Zen App Services site's perspective, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to right-click on it. We're going to drag down here to Secure Access. And we're going to change this again to Gateway Direct. And we're going to, I mean, it's, we're going to go through the same process. Put in zen.gecko.local. Go through the same configuration. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to disable session reliability. We're going to add the STA. Finish. And we're going to create a second site here for our internal resources. And you'll notice PN Agent 1. And we're not going to configure it at this point. And voila. So at this point, your Netscaler, your Access Gateway, your web interface, they're all configured to work properly together. Open a web browser, point to the web address from the outside, launch your applications, launch your desktops. You should be good to go. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.